Hi everyone. Today we will be uh, discussing the topic uh, SAP BAPI for beginners and not just BAPI. In this video, we will also discuss important points which you should consider when you are developing a BAPI or a ODATA service class. Basically, all the important points which you need to consider when you are exposing your SAP data to the outside world. Let it be a BAPI or an ODATA service. Now, in our previous video, we saw the roadmap for SAP UI, which discussed the journey of SAP from SAP RFC function module or any transaction up to SAP OData services, uh, UIFI or Fiori apps. And throughout this uh, uh, technology ad um, you know, advancement, which SAP has done, uh, there is one thing which has always been common to update the uh, data uh, back into SAP is uh, BAPIs, which is business APIs, which are provided by SAP. So let's take a, a closer look at it. Now BAPI, BAPIs have evolved over last 20 plus years or so. Uh, BAP, um, BAPIs have evolved, uh, first SAP started with RFC function modules and over a period of time they realized certain issues in RFC function modules when sending data to and fro from SAP system to any other system. And then they came up with the concept of BAPIs, which took care of all these issues, which were there in a normal RFC function module. <clears throat> now, if you will ask me, uh, you know, why uh, BAPI is still relevant and why not uh, SAP just directly gives a, a object oriented class and why not a direct, you know, CDS uh, uh, or OData service uh, class, which is there to update the SAP standard master data transaction. So uh, to those people who are not aware, when SAP came up with the concept of object oriented programming, they came up with this business object repository and BAPIs were their relevant methods which were called inside these business objects. Now, over a period of time, SAP came up with this transaction code SC24. And as we saw in the roadmap, uh, SAP UI roadmap that, uh, you know, because BAPIs were used uh, already used in the existing system in various other custom developments, let it be IDA uh, workflow or any other UI. Uh, what SAP did was they came up with this concept of uh, OOP classes in SE24, let it be any OOP class or a OData service class, uh, which forms as a wrapper. And within that, you will call a BAPI to update the SAP standard master data or transaction data. So because whether you are writing a, or any OOP class or a web service or a OData service, internally you will be calling a BAPI. So you need to understand the basic uh, core things which should be taken care of. Uh, otherwise, you will land up in issues in your OData service or a web service or any other kind of restful ABAP programming. So let us understand that as well. <clears throat> Now the key features of BAPI are uh, basically BAPI is a function module. So if you go in SC37 and open any SAP standard BAPI, it will be marked as RFC enabled in the attributes tab and it will be a no dialog transaction uh, function module, which means there won't be any error message which will be thrown or any screen pop-up which will come uh, when you call any BAPI. <coughs> Now uh, it is driven by the T code uh, BAPI or uh, it is driven by BUR business object repository and the T code for the data is BAPI. So if you want to see the list of all BAPIs which are available, you can go to the T code uh, BAPI and find out your relevant BAPI. Let's say if you have to update any purchase requisition using any OData service, and you want to call the SAP standard purchase requisition BAPI within your OData service class, you need to go to BAPI transaction and find out which BAPI you need to call or any other uh, business object uh, uh, accordingly. Now, one thing which I have seen recently is that there are many people in industry, they call themselves OData service experts or might be, uh, you know, web service experts. And what 
one issue which is commonly which i have seen is that within that o data service class or the web service class these experts have called um, obsolete bapis and this has led to a lot of effort and defects in your uit user acceptance test so always remember that whenever you are designing a o data service to update any sap standard business object um, you should always go to uh, this t code bapi and see whether the bapi which you are using in your o data service class whether it is obsolete or not if you use a obsolete bapi in your o data service class or your web service you will land up in lot of issues during your uat uh, uat uh, uh, or in qa system where you have the actual data and then you will spend up a lot of time identifying what is the problem so ensure that this is taken this point is taken care of the next one is uh, bapis are always uh, have user friendly interface so this also applies to o data service now remember one thing whether it is a bapi or a o data service which you are exposing to the outside world the outside world is not familiar with sap terminology when you say vbak or vbln or you know auart or ekko or ekpo or vbap outside third party programmer will not understand these terms these free names so what sap has done is that in case of bapis or when you are developing your own o data services and you are creating your own structures to expose it to the outside world you should have user friendly parameters the structure name should not be vbak it should be sales order header it should not be ekq it should be purchase pr uh, po header it should not be vbap it should be sales order uh, line item uh, so line item it should not be ekpo it should be po line item if in case of purchase requisition it should not be the relevant uh, uh, structure it should be pr header so this is how it should look and the fields also within this structures it should not be vbln ebln basart or some other uh, uh, you know field which is there in the sap standard structure it should always be so number po number or document type or you know so and so currency uh, so and so amount or any other field name it should be a field name which to the third party programmer should understand very easily what happens is typically what i have seen is to avoid this mapping people go ahead and develop o data services or bapis using the sap standard field names only for momentarily you save your efforts in mapping these fields to and fro from the sap standard structures to the uh, english user friendly structure names and you think you have saved a lot of effort but when you give your bapi or o data service to the third party programmer you land up spending a lot of time explaining them each and every what each and every field name means so always remember whenever you are exposing your data to the outside world it should always be in a user friendly format it should be something which is you know if the person understands english Uh, he should understand the structure names which are in user friendly english uh, names and not what the sap standard tables are so the next point is uh, obviously the change parameter structures so most of the bapis they have these uh, change parameter structures which correspond to the same name as the original structure and in this structure if you see all these fields have one character let's say there are 100 character uh, fields and the third party system is only passing let's say 10 fields then the third party programmer has to mark these 10 fields as x in this change structure and pass it back to the uh, sap system either to the bapi or o data service the next is uh, currency specific fields now and this is very particular uh, error which you get in global rollouts and 
uh, uh, typically what happens is that you start your uh, global rollout from US region or uh, Europe region and then later on you roll it out to other countries which have different currency formats. Uh, so Euro, US and Europe, they usually have two decimals and there are other countries. So you develop your uh, external interface for a BAPI or a, a OData service with that decimal two only. And then later on, when you are sending your data uh, to uh, other countries uh, and when you're dealing with currencies from other countries, the decibel format is different. So what happens at that time, either option one is you come and change the interface of your existing um, OData service or a BAPI from two decimals to four decimals, which will be hazardous because already in your global rollout, there are few countries with two decimals which are already addressing uh, uh, that OData service. So what you do is you create another underscore, let's say Japan version or might be Thailand version, which has different decimals and you will keep on creating different, different objects, multiple objects to achieve the same target. So uh, what you need to do is whenever you are developing a BAPI or OData service, you should always address the currency fields in decimal 23 followed by four uh, decimal units. This is what is SAP recommends and you should also always have your currency fields in this format to avoid this issue, especially in global rollouts. Uh, next one is uh, obviously there are function modules to convert the BAPI amount to the substandard format. You should use that. Uh, and the same goes uh, from SAP format to BAPI format. These substandard functional models have been provided. So you should use this mapping and that's what SAP recommends. Uh, next comes the return parameters. So uh, whenever you are sending data to the outside world, let it be a BAPI or your OData service a class, you will be sending data in a particular format. So that's what SAP recommends, the return structure. Initially, they came up with BAPI return, then BAPI return one, and then BAPI red two. So if you see the fields in this structure, they address all the fields which are used to, uh, uh, you know, um, send the error message, information message, or success message, basically messages to the user. And this structure should be utilized. So uh, that marks the end of uh, basic introduction to BAPI. Next topic is SAP logical unit of work, which is also very important, uh, not just from exposing your data uh, uh, you know, to the outside world and uh, uh, doing a commit uh, um, to the SAP database. So this core concept also we will understand in our next video. Thank you for watching my series. Bye.